Y'all didn't think we were going to miss the new Vercel announcements, did you? Come on. It's just day one of ship week and they just dropped three massive new projects, one of which we're actually competing with. So it's going to be a fun thing to cover. If you haven't heard already, Vercel started their ship week with storage day. They shipped three new storage products for the different types of data storage you might be doing. They already had an edge config type thing that was more for like environment variable type stuff, but there was nothing meant to be written to regularly and updated constantly. And today they fixed that with three new products. The first one is a KV product. It's kind of similar to Worker KV or really Redis because it's built on top of Redis. Specifically, it's built on top of Upstash's Redis implementation. Just dope. Upstash is a close partner of the channel. They've helped us with everything from rate limiting to making our queries faster. And it's so cool to see them being recognized by Vercel in such an awesome way. Now you can use them for a KV straight through Vercel and not have to set up a separate account. Super dope. They also introduced Vercel Postgres. We're MySQL fans here, but Postgres is totally fine. And it's really cool seeing edge ready, performant, scalable SQL on Vercel as an option. I haven't played with this one just yet, but it is really cool to see. And third, and most interestingly, Vercel Blob. Vercel Blob is attempting to make the developer experience using Cloudflare's R2 better to compete with something like S3. We feel the pain here so strongly that we also today happened to launch our storage product, Upload Thing. So definitely check us out at uploadthing.com if you want to see a better developer experience right now, because Vercel's is a closed beta at the moment. As exciting as it is, you can't use it just yet, so wait a little bit. Super hyped about what they have here. We can even take a quick look at the developer experience of all these options. So with the KV, you see you can just import KV from Vercel and then await kv.get or kv.set. And it's that simple to update a value in your storage. This is kind of what Cloudflare used to do, honestly, when you deployed things on Cloudflare through workers, it would have like global access to all of their magical packages and namespace stuff. This is getting really close to that. It's still imported, so it's not quite as magical, but I think that's for the better. The results here is something that feels very natural and slides right into your existing code bases and not just your next JS code bases, anything you deploy on Vercel. Vercel Postgres is similarly simple, where you import SQL and then you write SQL strings here. They didn't have support for much in terms of ORMs day one, but they're quickly catching up. I think I just saw Prisma made a driver. I know that there's already a driver for Keysly and Drizzle is about to release theirs as well. So we'll see drivers to have more ORM-like experiences soon. For now, it's just write the string inside of the SQL tags. Almost feels a little bit like a uh, style components, if you're familiar with that from the past. I know, throwback, but it is really cool to see. This also will run on the edge, unlike many other Postgres clients because it doesn't have to form a native connection. It just does it all over HTTP. And they partnered with Neon to do all of this. We go down to the blob storage. This is where things are the most interesting and arguably the least ready for consumption. I'm super excited about what they're doing just because it's time for R2 to be more accessible. But man, it's missing a lot of important stuff. Like here we are putting the file through our own endpoint, which means it can only be up to four megabytes since it's using put. There's no way to do pre-signed post URLs. There's no way to send larger files without having the either the client run running the entire file upload process, which means it has the secret, or you're hosting a server and doing that yourself outside of Vercel. So it's still early, but it is very, very promising. I could even see a future where we move to using Vercel blob at upload thing. We are already playing with it, but not ready quite yet. Super excited to see what Vercel blob enables in terms of global distribution of your large files for a cheap price in a very simple developer experience. That said, if you want it right now, pretty hard to beat what we have at upload thing. If you're already familiar with something like TRPC, the setup is nearly identical and we support the app router too. And Edge. Of course, we support Edge. Come on. You, you know how we are. If you want to see how simple it is, you define a router. You can copy paste this straight into your code base. Here we have F, which is the file router. We give it the different file types that are valid. We give it a max size. Then we give it a middleware, which is a function that runs on our server and validates whether or not the user can actually upload the thing. Then on upload complete, which also runs on your server. This will handle anything S3 can handle. We don't have a paid tier yet, but it's unlimited use, two gigabytes of storage for free. We'll add paid tier soon. And if you want to hear more about that, I'll make sure I pin the video at the end where we announce upload thing. And here you can see. Uh, as Vercel specified, the limits are pretty strict right now. There's a future where they aren't as strict, but for now, the blob storage is just not ready for the heavy types of use case we do with everything from like video to weird giant resolution images to giant piles of metadata for AI training and stuff like that. Still really cool to see simple, small image uploads supported through Vercel. I trust you, Faze, to figure out where the hell to stuff this bit. Let's take a quick look at the pricing. There's no pricing for the blob storage yet, but we can see the pricing for both Postgres as well as KV. Scroll down here. Not too bad. It's only $1 per month per additional database, which as much as I love planet scale, their per database pricing is significantly higher. But the compute makes it a little scary because you're not charged by how many requests are made. You're charged by the amount of compute that's run. And that's not a thing you have too much control of because as your database gets bigger, those queries might take more time and have to generate more cost in order to do the same query. Just kind of scary to me. I am excited to see how cheap this is over time. And honestly, 10 cents per additional compute hour, 100 free hours, pretty generous. I'm excited to see how far we can push that. And the storage total is interesting 
thing where it's only a quarter gig, but it's also pretty cheap per additional gig. So it's relatively fine. The last interesting piece is that they actually charge for the amount of data transfer. Not too many other services do this. However, SQL data tends to be very, very, very small. As long as you're not sending way too much data back and forth with your queries, you're going to be totally fine here. So I wouldn't expect this to get particularly expensive. Overall, these numbers might be scary compared to other services. But when you consider how easy it is to do things like caching a response and not sending too much data, these prices aren't the cheapest I've ever seen, but they absolutely are the most convenient. And I would be surprised if this was to get particularly expensive, especially because you can use this alongside all of Vercel's awesome caching tools. So you don't even have to hit the database unless data has changed. So if you, let's say, had an endpoint where you would update a user's profile, you could have another endpoint where you fetch the user's profile that's cached indefinitely. And the only time that cache is busted is when the user hits the user changed endpoint. So you never have to recompute or run any of the things here until a change occurs, which makes it way cheaper. So pretty excited to see what people are going to do with Postgres built into Vercel. I'll probably stay on planet scale for a bit, but this is still very exciting. The other feature that's fully ready to go in beta with pricing is the KV. It's built on top of Upstash and the pricing is relatively similar. You can see here it's $1 per additional database or read replica if you want to distribute your uh, storage across many places, which is pretty cool that you could do that manually. We also see requests per month, 30,000 for free and pros 150,000 requests. That that pro subscription on Vercel is getting more and more enticing every day. For 20 bucks a month, you get some crazy stuff. And here we can see another 100,000 requests for only 35 cents. So that's pretty good. That's a lot of stuff. And again, with the data transfer and the storage, these are priced identically to the database. Makes it pretty easy to reason about. This isn't charging based on compute, which is nice. I was honestly expecting quite a bit worse and it makes me excited to play with these things and try them out. Since you don't really have to sign up or set up a new account somewhere or get a bunch of environment variables out anywhere, you just install the package and you're good to go. So yeah, I'm pretty hyped. I can't wait to try these out more. Let me know which of these releases you're most excited about so I can be sure to get tutorials out as quickly as possible. I'm so hyped on what Vercel is shipping. I'm sure y'all are going to complain a lot in the comments, but we're only just getting started. So be ready. I'm going to do my best to get a video out every single day this week with all the new announcements that have been coming out. So thank you guys as always. Really appreciate it. Peace nerds.